Well, hello, and welcome to another bad movie review. <laughs> Today I'd like to discuss Shocker. No, not two in the pink, one in the stink. That's a different thing entirely. This is, in fact, a movie from 1989. Runs about 109 minutes or so. And it's directed and written by Wes Craven, the master of horror, at least one of them. Uh, you may remember him from his other movies, Nightmare on Elm Street series, and, of course, Serpent in the Rainbow. Well, in this particular film, a college football player named Jonathan Parker, played by Peter Berg, um, has a vision of his uh, foster family being murdered after getting hit in the head during practice. Well, you know, football players, it's probably just a concussion. But this vision does lead the police to TV repairman slash mass murderer Horace Pinker. Pinker obviously does not appreciate being caught. And he does kill quite a few people before he is ca captured finally. And he swears revenge and um, gets put on death row. But even death row can't stop Pinker's evil. Through black magic and the power of television, Pinker gains the powers that allow him to uh, possess people and to travel through the TV airwaves. Yeah. He seeks revenge on Jonathan, of course, but aided by his the spirit of his dead girlfriend, Jonathan has to survive and find a way to stop Pinker. Now, um... This is not an entirely serious movie. It does have some very comedic elements, some kind of cheap scares, and some really fun visuals. It's it's a great movie, honestly. It's Well, it's not great. It's good. It's a good movie. It's very entertaining. It's very fun, very well-paced. The special effects for the time, for 1989, were actually pretty good. Uh, and some of them still kind of hold up. So... Um, there is that. Now, um, plus there is a scene where a little girl is driving construction equipment trying to run over the main character, which was pretty awesome. One thing worth pointing out here is all the guest appearances, um, or th as they were called at the time, actors. You have John Tesh, former, uh, TV reality type host, like a... He was on Entertainment Tonight for a long time, and he uh, is now a musician. He plays a uh, TV anchor in this one. And there's also the famous Dr. Timothy Leary, who plays a televangelist. Ted Raimi's in this movie, and you may recognize him from pretty much everything Sam Raimi's ever done, plus Xena Warrior Princess. And, of course, Richard Brooks, um, who many of you Law & Order fans will remember from the first season. Um, I really like uh, Richard Brooks. I think he's a very good actor and very underutilized. So it was nice to see him. Uh, plus Alice Cooper, uh, who likes to appear in all sorts of movies. He was in John Carpenter's uh, Prince of Darkness. And I think he appeared in a couple other films too. But at any rate, um, the, one, of his, one of Alice Cooper's songs is remade for this movie, the 1973 uh, No More Mr. Nice Guy, which is performed by Metalli or Megadeth, a better band than Metallica. Um, the soundtrack is really good if you like heavy metal. It's got, which, you know, most horror movies and action films really need more heavy metal music. Um, like I said, the effects were pretty good for 1989. The fact that it's written and directed by Wes Craven, so you know you're going to get decent product. Uh, there's some really good camera tricks, like the use of the fog around the water and the way people popped up. Um, the static effect on Pinker's ghost body looked pretty cool because it has kind of like a out-of-tune TV look that younger viewers may not be able to relate to because, you know, they're not used to seeing static and snow on TVs these days, but um, older viewers might appreciate that. Also, the, um, there were some important uh, or interesting side notes I wanted to go over. One of the victims is Heather Lankenkamp. She was one of the main characters in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Well, she's one of the main actors, rather. And she appeared in three Nightmare on Elm Street films. So that was kind of cool. Um, so if, if you recognize her, she's got dark hair. 
Um, there are rumors that there was an uncut version of this film that was actually almost rated X that has a couple of more violent scenes during the electrocution and a scene where uh, Pinker bites the fingers off of one of the guards. Um, but that's never surfaced, even though people have persistently asked about it. So uh, be on the w on the lookout for uh, maybe an extended cut somewhere down the line, hopefully. Uh, since I believe Wes Craven is no longer with us, that's always a possibility. Um, all right, and then I wanted to go over Camille Cooper, who plays the love interest in this one. Uh, she did something very interesting not that long ago. Back in 2008, um, she was serving as the Director of Legislative Affairs for the National Association of Protect Children. And she helped spearhead the Protect Our Children Act of 2008, the largest crime bill of the 110th Congress. I'm reading this from IMDb. And it was signed into law by President George W. Bush. Uh, and I'm still quoting here. This bill brought unprecedented changes, innovation, technology, and resources to law enforcement, resulting in hundreds of millions of dollars of spending for law enforcement job creation and technology development, including a global law enforcement information sharing and de-conflict internet portal, end quote. So it was a one of those keep the kids away from the pervs sort of bills. So good for her. And she's not a bad actress. She only had about 12 film credits uh, to her name, but uh, I think what she did in 2008 there was much more important. Anyway, Shocker is a fun film. It's not entirely a serious movie. It is kind of a horomedy where there's a lot of comedy elements and the ending is let's face it it's super silly but it's fun it's uh i got a lot of enjoyment out of it i thought it held up pretty well over time it is kind of derivative as a lot of people complain about that it has a lot of similarities to nightmare on elm street maybe wes craven just cranked this one out for you know fun or extra cash or whatever but it, it's set in Ohio from, from based on all the license plates. And uh, it appears to be set in Marysville, Ohio, which is a um, small city outside of Columbus. So that was kind of cool because, you know, Midwest horror, you know, Ohio produces serial killers and presidents and that's and corn. And that's really about it. So, uh, yeah, the movie was a lot of fun. It, it is a lot of running around. It's got great pacing. And, it, it, yeah, it's derivative, but... If, it's a guy who goes through TVs and has like electric powers and it's just silly, but it's fun. It's a fun movie. And, uh, at one point somebody does do the Superman gun throw, like he's out of bullets. So he just throws the gun at somebody and I got a kick out of that. Cause it's funny every time to me. So yeah, it, it's a fun kind of lighthearted slasher flick. If there is such a thing, it's a, uh, it's not overly graphic, but there is a lot of blood not super gory, but if you like uh, not non-serious horror films, you might like this. There's not a lot of jump scares or anything. It's not super, super creepy and serious. It's just kind of uh, like a well-paced, fun popcorn flick. Um, and yeah, there's no nudity, so it's got an R rating for violence and gore, but other than that, it's... it's um, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of heavy stuff in here that I, I would find super objectionable for an R-rated horror film. And I, I think, I, based on my experience with it, I would recommend it. I think it was a fun film. If you like the Nightmare on Elm Street movies, it might be a nice, uh, slightly change of pace. Um, it's kind of the same general premise as, you know, serial killer killing people. Uh, by But this time through possessing bodies and jumping through TVs. And, um, yeah, it was just a fun, goofy movie. And I, I think it's a very underrated one that gets a lot of negative reviews from a lot of people. But if you're a horror fan or a Wes Craven fan, you should check it out. And if you want something that's a little less serious that you can make out to or just hang out and watch and only kind of half pay attention to, this is a good movie for that. It was a lot of fun, not too serious. So give it a shot. And I'm going to wrap it up here. Um, be sure and check out some of the other broadcasts I've done. And, uh, if you get a chance, uh, be sure and, uh, go through and look at those and stay tuned for more from bad movie review. Thanks for listening.